I'm Camilla Mondo. I'm Stacey Lavisol Jackson. And you're watching On the Road with Carmilla. Now, Stacey Lattisaw, I am so excited that you're here because I grew up watching you on Soul Train. When you had all these hits, you were singing with Johnny Gill, you opened up for Michael Jackson, and one day we were having a conversation, where is Stacey Lattisaw? And I happened to find out that you had written a book. Mm -hmm. So let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? I'm from Southeast D.C., Washington, D.C., born and raised in D.C. You were born and raised in Southeast D.C. What, what part? Because I'm from the uh, Wheeler Road part. What part of D.C. is that? Actually, we lived on Minnesota Avenue, Minnesota. Uh, off of Minnesota Avenue, Eli Place Southeast. Eli For Place. 12 years, I was born right there, and, and we lived there for a while, and I was most of my childhood was spent there in that area. You have uh, mm -hmm. siblings, brothers and sisters? I have sisters. two sisters and a brother. Two mm -hmm. sisters and a brother. Yes. Now, I read your book, and in mm -hmm. the book, you talked about how much you love to sing. Mm -hmm. So, singing was a part of the family, or was that something you just liked? Actually, uh, singing was my mother's uh, passion. My mother singing with Marvin Gaye. They went to school together in Washington, D.C., and uh, she was in a group with him, and she was one of the lead singers, and uh, later on, she began to have kids, and, and she realized by the time I was six years old, that I could sing. So it was my mother's idea for me to sing, not mine. Especially to be a professional singer, that was more, more of her idea. I got that impression as I read the book mm -hmm. that this was kind of more that's your mother's dream yeah, it was. than it was yours. It was. But it, you didn't it mind was. it because you enjoyed singing, but you had some issues. Yeah, I, I really didn't want to sing on that level. You know, I just pretty much wanted to sing at home and, you know, as, as most kids do and have a normal childhood, you know. But um, by the time I was 12 years old, I recorded my very first album on Atlantic Records, and um, my childhood was, was no longer the same. You know, my, my life began to change at that point. You talked a lot of, about that in the book, about not having a childhood and, mm -hmm. and touring with your mother and going on different tours and mm -hmm. things like that. Talk a little bit about that. Actually, uh, that was quite challenging for me because as a child, you know, at the age of 10, 13 years old, that was quite challenging for me. I had to come out of school in the eighth grade. I had to be homeschooled because um, kids were starting to pick on me and, and my single, Love and Two Way Street, had become a top ten record. So um, things began to change for me. And it was just not, you know, just it, it was a, an interesting time, but at the same time it was not uh, quite as enjoyable for me because I had so much stress on me, traveling, doing you know, two and three shows a week and on the airplanes constantly. And, um, but my mom, she was always with me. I had a very good foundation. My, my father, he was a, um, worked in the government printing office for many years. And my mother, she was a stay-at-home mom. So uh, I did have a very good support system and I think that's what kept me grounded. You talked a lot mm -hmm. about your family being grounded. Yes. And, and when you would uh, travel, your mother would go with yes, you. Yes, I never went anywhere, any place alone. Do you think that <laughs> makes a difference? And now, if the kids are in this business, that parents don't necessarily accompany them or manage them? Because I didn't hear the book about drugs or alcohol, anything oh, like that. Oh, yeah. See, that, that foundation, when, when that's, that foundation is set, you know, and, and it starts at home with, with, the, with the parents raising the kids, you know, and and um, my, my parents, we, they were very, uh, very strict on us, but at the same time, I realize now that it made us, my sisters and I, it, it made us better, you know, because um, there were many times when my, some of my friends would be able to go out and do things, and my mother's like, no, you can't go. But um, I, I realize now that, you know, I didn't miss a whole lot, you know, and I think that it kept me out of trouble, mm -hmm. I would say. Now you have this hit record, you're on Soul Train, you're opening up for the Jacksons, and you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I got from the book. Yeah. You're still unhappy. I wasn't happy. I was 15 years old. And it was funny because uh, Michael Jackson's manager contacted my management in New York and asked me to be the opening act for the Jacksons tour 1981, the Victory Tour. And I actually said no because I didn't want to be gone for 13 weeks. We were, we were supposed to go to 36 different cities. So uh, my mother was like, well, my, at the time my father was my co-manager, 
and he was like, well, this is going to be, this is really going to jumpstart your career, and I think this is what, what you should do, and, and I was like, no, I just want to stay home, play kickball, volleyball, double dutch, you know, all the old school games that kids did, you know, and um, I just wanted to be a normal child, but they talked me into it, and it, it really did um, take me, my, my career in a, in a higher level, and meeting Michael to me was an honor. It was to me, um, every time I think about it today, I'm 45 years old, and, and many people would have loved the opportunity to open for the Jacksons, in my opinion, the greatest entertainer in, in our lifetime. And I actually said no. But at 15, I mean, you don't know. You know what I'm saying? You just, I was just a little girl, but I realize now that it was a tremendous opportunity for me. And um, if I hadn't done that, who knows? But I, I, I know now it was, it was all a part of God's plan because they could have called anyone, you know, and if anybody would have jumped at that opportunity. But for whatever reason, God said, Stacy. And um, he has been using every platform God has given me. He's been using it for such a time as this. And I'm so thankful that even in those times when you know, I didn't, because I suffered with bouts of depression. Like I said, I was, I had things. I had money, lots of friends, and lots of money and stuff, and never had to look at a price tag whenever I went shopping. It was whatever I wanted, I pretty much got. But I was so empty on the inside for so many years. I had a void in me and never knew what the void was. So whenever I felt that way, I would always go to the store and buy something new. You know, and, and say, well, well, maybe this will make me feel happier. Maybe, you know, that, that, that diamond ring will do it for me. But it never did. It never did. And um, it's as if I was in this dark place. And I, I knew I, I knew I was Stacy Lattisall, but I didn't know who Stacy Lattisall was, if that makes sense. You were a sense. kid. You are yeah. 15 years old. Yeah, but I, I just was so lost, you know, had this, this void in me. So one day, I think by the time I was... 19, 20 years old, I dropped to the floor and I said, God, I've heard about you, but I need to know who you are. And at that moment, I felt a presence come over me that I'd never felt before in my life. And it was as if God was saying to me, I've been waiting for you to come to me just as you are. And at that time, everything began to change for me. Now, let's go back a bit. Because you're in school, you're, mm -hmm. you got a, a, a hit record, and mm -hmm. then comes your friend, Johnny Gill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and Johnny Gill, now we know he's a part of New Edition. Yeah. He was a solo artist. Mm -hmm. But the, always the question, was Stacy dating Johnny Gill? We actually went to school together. Mm -hmm. We went to Sousa Junior High School here in Washington, D.C., and Johnny would come over to my house because we would, every day, we would have talent shows in my basement, which was so many. It was so much fun. Uh, and everybody would come over to my house. My house was the hangout spot. We would, we would dance. We'd play volleyball in front of the yard, we would just tear my mother's grass all up. But uh, it was so much fun because everyone did something different in the talent show. One of my friends, she would act, the other one would be the, the, um, the comedian. And uh, so one particular day, Johnny was over the house. So uh, we were about to have a talent show. And he said, uh, he said, well, I want to be in a talent show. So I said, what are you going to do? So he says, I want to sing. So he actually got up and he sang a song about maybe 10 of us. And he sang this song, and it was like, it was like this grown man's voice in this little 15-year-old boy. So I flew up the stairs, and I told my mom, I said, you've got to hear him. His nickname is Boogie. That's what we call him still today. I said, you've got to hear him sing. So my mother, she ran up, the, she, she came downstairs, and um, she was like, oh, my gosh, you've got to get Henry. Henry Allen was the, res the president of Atlantic Records. He was like, when he heard Johnny sing, he was like, within two weeks, he signed him to Atlantic Records. He went to New York, wow. and that's how Johnny got his recording contract. Wow. So, so do you still have a relationship with Johnny Gill? Not really, because we dated for three years. And um, because, we, because I married, I got married by the time I was 24, and my husband, out of respect for my husband, I no longer, I, we, we talk every once in a while as far as business, but we don't really keep in touch. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, you decided at the height of your career to quit. Mm -hmm. 
What was your parents' reaction when you told them, I don't want to do this anymore? Oh, parents, management, friends, music industry. Everybody thought I was crazy, you know, because at that time, that single, the duet we did, Where Do We Go From Here, that was the number one song on the Billboard charts. For four weeks, that song was, was number one. So at that time, I, you know, I had just had an encounter with God. So I, I went to my dad. I said, I said, Dad, I don't know what's going on with me, but I'm no longer going to be singing R&B music. And it, he was like, hmm? <laughs> so, and then I told my manager also, I said, um, I'm not going to be singing R&B much longer. So uh, there were people, you know, friends of mine that, that you know, began to walk away. And, and there were other people in the industry that didn't understand why I did what I did. But God called me, and I answered the call. And see, what happened was he took the desire away from me to sing R&B music. And, and everybody's walk with God is different. You know, I don't, I don't condemn anyone that sing R&B music. I, you know, I love music. I'm a, I'm a music person. But... As far as me, God called me out, and he called me out at the perfect time, in my opinion, because the music industry has changed so much. And uh, for me, back in, I would say, 1980, 1990 or 91, so somewhere around that time, it was, it was changing so much where you, it was no longer about singing. You know, it was focusing more on your body parts and showing more of your private parts. So I said, you know what? This is no longer for me. And and um, I was, you know, I've always been a singer. And, and um, when it came to that, you know, and, and it's almost like you had to be in this clique you know, of people who party and drink and liquor and getting drunk and snort, snorting cocaine and doing all that kind of stuff. So I said, hey, and having sex with this person, that person to get farther in your career, I said, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've always considered myself a lady and, and a woman of integrity. So I said, you know what? I said, I choose God. And I walked away and I never looked back. I've had offers to, to come, go back and, and sing R&B music. But I said, the peace I found, the peace that I found today I know God is real. I cannot go. I, I can't go back there, back there again. Because see, when God's called you, when 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 you have had a encounter with God, it's impossible to turn around. Mm -hmm. You stay on track. You mm -hmm. stay with you stay mm -hmm. with God, and and that's where I've been. And it's been 18 years for me uh, since I had my son. My son's 18. When I walked away from the R&B industry, God has taken very good care of me. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has proven himself to be faithful. I'm living better now than I was when I was singing R&B music. Like I said, I don't, I don't put R&B music down, but God called me. I'm a minister now, and I love what, doing what I do because it, it blesses me so much that God can use my story, the, the, the suffering and the, the, the depression and, and the things I went through to minister to other women who have been, you know, broken and in bad situations and hurting and lost and um, suffering with low self-esteem. I, I went through all that. See, so if I hadn't gone through that, mm -mm, glory to God, I got the blessing. I would not be able to share of, you know, how God kept me and preserved me during that time. So in each of us, there's a story. See, so he set me down for 18 years, and I've been a stay-at-home mom for 18 years and enjoying it. I've been married to the same man for 20 years, and God <laughs> sent me a godly man. He loves Amen. the Lord, and he treats me like a queen. Amen. And um, I'm so thankful that, you know, obedience, when you are obedient to, excuse me, when you're obedient to God, it opens doors that man can't shut. So, you know, No my, regrets. No, I have no regrets. Don't miss the spotlight. So ever. Don't miss the limbo. Let me tell you something. I love doing what I do. I love it so much. It brings me so much joy to speak to kids. I, I have a youth empowerment program. I go to schools. I talk to kids about the importance of integrity, the importance of abstinence, the importance of education, the importance of being a leader and not a follower. It brings me so much joy to try and make a difference in some of these kids' lives that, that, that need to vent. They need to know that someone cares. They need to know that there's hope. See, so that to me, and, and the women's ministry I have, Women Walking with Authority, I have women's conferences scheduled through October of this year. 
And I'm just, it, it brings me so much joy when I stand up there and God just speaks through me. And I, and I see women come to the altar at the end of it. That to me is priceless. Money can't buy that. Money cannot buy that. So what I do now, to me, it is an honor. It is truly an honor to be used by God. Money can't buy the peace of God. Mm. Money can't buy the, the favor of God. Mm. So, yeah, what I, what, I've walked, walk, what I walked away from, I'm sorry, what I walked into is far greater than what I walked away from. Mm. Now, yeah. let's talk about the industry just a little bit more because so many young people just want to be in this business. They want to be mm -hmm. rappers, dancers, mm -hmm. uh, Beyonce or whoever, mm -hmm. and they don't have a clue about the business. In the book, you describe some of the issues you had financially. Mm -hmm. they, there was money missing. Oh, yeah. A a explain <laughs> some of those things because a lot of people need to understand this is a Business. It is a business. And see, that's what my husband and I are trying to do. We're opening a music growth center. And in this facility, we're going to have entertainment lawyers. This center is going to be for aspiring artists, people that want to sing, that want to dance, that want to rap. We're going to teach them the business part of the music industry because we did not have a clue. At 13, I sure didn't have a clue, but my parents didn't know. And because they did not know, the business part of the industry we were taking advantage of. And there's so much of that that goes on that people are not aware of. As far as contracts, you know, it's important to have, you just can't have an attorney. You need to have an entertainment attorney. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we're looking um, to, to help people with our facility and um, the importance of, of, of knowing the business part of the industry. You have got to have knowledge of what you're getting yourself into and and also you have to be careful of the folk that you uh i would say that you um invite in in your circle because i've had people that have been my so-called friends who have come and stolen things from me personally in my home and um even with management you know i was beat out of lots of money from my my management company that um Back then, we didn't know, like I said, and because of the lack of knowledge, we were taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. So what my focus is, is trying to teach some of these up-and-coming artists about some of the pitfalls that, 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 you know, I went through so they won't have to go through what I went through. Your kids come to you today? Mom, I want to sing? Oh, both of them. Oh, my gosh. Well, my son, he's 18. He writes and produces songs. You can be hearing some stuff about him soon because he has a lot of people that he's working with. And uh, my daughter, she's 14. She loves to sing. She plays the piano. And she also writes songs as well. But I don't really want her to be in the industry. At 14, she's not ready. And still, you know, because of the things that I went through, I'm kind of... I, I'm, I'm just kind of nervous about her being, you know, in that, in that because you have to have thick skin to be able to, you know, to, to handle that. And, and if she does want to sing, you know, at 17 or 18, prayerfully it will be inspirational gospel music because that's what, that's what she does. She, she's been singing in churches now for, for a while. She does praise and worship. Now, and, uh, there, so there's that's a, what she does. There's a part in the book where you talked about you had in order for God to completely heal you, mm -hmm. you had to forgive mm -hmm. some, someone. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say who that someone is, or it was just it was it multiple people, or it was just forgiveness in general? It was a it was a specific person that I helped out along the way, that um, that that uh, did not uh, thank thank us, did not. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, did not really, um, how would I say it, uh, oh gosh, this, this particular person, we, my family and I helped out a lot, and, and this person did not, you know, show the, the appreciation of us helping them get aboard, get, get in the, the industry, and, and, um, it, it kind of, uh, hurt me because, um, you know, we were close, and um, probably digging a little bit too far, 
But anyway, yeah, I, I, had, I had to forgive because, see, people don't understand the importance of forgiveness. Forgiveness, if that person, if you don't forgive, number one, you hinder your prayers. Your, your prayers don't go up to the throne. Secondly, that person has power over you if you do not forgive. So you must forgive and forget it and let it go and just let, it, let God deal with that. But there was a process for me because the flesh wants to hold on to unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. But we, as a people, we were born with a sinful nature, so we want to forgive and say, well, I'm not going to ever let that go. But we've got to come to that place where we, we give it totally to God, not just a little bit to God. Give it totally to Him and say, God, in, in, in myself, I, I, I don't want to forgive. I don't even know how to forgive. But when we go to God and we ask Him, God, help me to forgive. Give me the grace to forgive. Hallelujah. And when we, when we do that, God comes in and he softens your heart and you begin to just, just forgive and just let it go and say, God, this is yours. I've given this over to you now. So I'm no longer carrying that weight because it is a weight. And, and, and unforgiveness, a um, few doctors have actually said that unforgiveness is linked with, with different diseases and it causes many sicknesses in the body so we've got to um, we've got to forgive because that's who God just think about it this way we as a people we we even our own thinking mm -hmm. sometimes is a sin so we've got to forgive because if he doesn't forgive us then then what mm -hmm. because we do wrong pretty much every day mm -hmm. but we thank God for his grace and mercy mm -hmm. because he forgives us so we are to forgive and love Love unconditionally like God loves. See, mm -hmm. when you take on the character of God, you begin to spend time with God, you begin to love like he loves. Mm -hmm. Now, you were not necessarily brought up in a Christian family. You said you were Catholic. Mm -hmm. And you went to church, but you didn't know about the Holy Ghost. Oh, my goodness. You didn't goodness. know about healing. <laughs> How did you get all this that anointing? So Where did this come much. from? I tell you, it's so, when, when I think about it, we would go to... Catholic church on Sunday because we thought it was the right thing to do, right? But it was like we didn't have a relationship with God. Now I realize, you know, today there's a difference between religion and relationship. What we were doing was going to church, but spiritually we weren't growing. Spiritually it was like, you know, we would just go to church Sunday after Sunday and, and still do the same old thing. But when you tap into a relationship with God, you live to please God, and you want to do what God has called you to do and walk in obedience to fulfill God's, um, uh, you know, plans for your life. But uh, yeah, we didn't we didn't have a clue about um, about um, what we were doing. We just thought it was the right thing, pretty much tradition, you know. But one day, one day, I realized the importance of relationship, and religion left the door. Oh yeah, relationship with Christ. That's that's what it's all about. So is your whole family <laughs> saved now and, and Yeah, uh well I think all of us have people in our families that are not saved, but we, we continue to pray for them and we mm -hmm. continue to believe God that um that that he's gonna bring him in in his time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about your relationship with you and your mother? Oh I love my mother. I love my father, I love my, my whole family. I mean, I've always been a a people person but I realize now that I have some outstanding parents. My parents have been so supportive. You know, my father kind of questioned what I was doing because he was like, what are you doing walking away from the music? What are you, how are you going to pay your bills? Because I still had, you know, obligations. And I had things I had to take care of. But, um, yeah, they, they've been very supportive of me. And I don't know, I could have ended up on drugs. I could have ended up in a rehab somewhere. I could have ended up, ended up in the street some some place if my mom was not there with me she every place i went whether it was africa we went to japan we went to europe we went to all over the country she would travel with me everywhere i went mm -hmm. and i realize now that that was so important because that kept me grounded and it also kept me safe i had a covering over me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you think about the death of whitney houston Oh yeah, that that broke that broke America's heart. That broke the world's heart. That broke the entire world. I world's felt heart. like I knew her. You know, same same thing with Michael Jackson. That yeah. broke my heart. I remember one day I was at home, and um, I was actually in the bedroom, and I, I was watching the news, and I was like, 
this can't be true. So, you know, this has got to be a, you know, a hoax or something. And I just sat there and I just cried because, like I said, I kind of experienced some of what Michael went through. Being a child star, you know, people don't understand the stress and, and so much pressure that's put on you. You know, at, at 12 years old, you know, it, it's Michael had so much stress on him. And um, I remember when I was 15, when I toured with him, I could I could tell back then that he was not happy. You, you know, you can tell from a person's countenance, you know. And um, I know I've been there. You know, you walk around with a smile on your face, pretending everything is okay, but on the inside, you're not happy. You're not content. And um, so I can definitely, you know, relate to some of what Michael had endured and and being in that that public eye all the time. You whenever you're going somewhere, you you have to have a bodyguard with you and pretty much disguise yourself sometimes because of the, you know, the famous, the famousness, I don't think there's a word, but anyway, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, Whitney's death hit, hit us the same way, you know, and it was just so untimely and just so, so much of a shock because, um, no one ever, you know, would have imagined that she would die at such a young age and she was just, um, an incredible singer. You know, and, and um, I met Whitney one time. I was about, I would say, 16 or 17. I met her, and we had taken pictures together. And um, I never kept in touch with her, but I just had that one meeting with her. But it just broke our hearts. And, you know, I'm just, I, I, I truly believe that she is in a better place. She's no longer suffering. She's no longer in pain, and, and um, I believe she's at peace now. So, Stacy, tell me about your relationship with Christ. My relationship with Christ is everything to me. God is my source. He's my strength. He's my shield. He must, he's my buckler. He's my strong tower. He's my way maker. He's everything to me. I mean, I could not imagine living my life without God. I don't know how people do it today. I don't have a clue. What's next for Stacy Lattisall Jacks? I'm working on the gospel CD, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to get my daughter to sing something on it with me. And I'm also speaking at women's conferences, youth conferences, churches, and um, I just, I'm just continuing to serve God and go where He wants me to go. Well, God bless you, Miss <laughs> Jackson, and thank, thank you, you. you for taking the time.